Hi, welcome everyone. Welcome to uh, St George's Staff Wellbeing Week. And we're going to kick off this morning with animals and wellbeing. I, I'll probably be reading from my notes, but um, so what we're going to do this morning is, uh, first of all, we're going to talk about the human-animal bond, pets and wellbeing. And then we're going to look at uh, interacting with animals in our environment. And we're also going to look at another a number of organisations um, that um, became more active during lockdown that may be of interest. Some useful links and projects you might be interested in. And then we're going to chat about pets as therapy with Dave. You may know Dave and Rosie. <laughs> um, we have the wolves uh, visiting, and they're going to tell you a little bit about their experiences. Uh, David and Rosie won't hear us in Georgia. So, okay, so, um, so what is the human animal bond? So, firstly, if we look at that, um, it's a mutually beneficial and dynamic relationship between people and other animals that is influenced by behaviours that are essential to the health and well being of both, so both animals and both people. So, on the first slide, we're going to look at the health benefits of having a pet. So number one, they keep you fit, they, uh, it's an opportunity to increase your physical activity, dogs need regular exercise, uh, they create op opportunities for outdoor activities, it's a great way to un unwind after a long shift uh, in a different space, a different environment to help you breathe and relax. And they make sure you're never lonely, cats and dogs make great companions, they're always happy to lend a ear after a difficult day. They don't judge you, uh, they, um, their friendship is unconditional, they keep you company and also keep your confidence. Uh, pets are great listeners, they listen to the tone of your voice rather than the content, so you're safe at your secrets of being kept. <laughs> they lower your stress levels, um, so companion animals help us relax, stroking a pet, watching a fish swim in an aquarium listening to a dog or horse in the garden or park are all pleasant and grounding distractions from your anxiety of everyday life. They also allow us to create a, a mindful space. A large review of studies by the British Psychological Society found that pets, and particularly dogs, promote psychological well-being and boost a person's self-esteem. And if you take a look at their, the BPS website, you can get more information on that. Pets and well-being. So our uh, next slide, if we're looking at some of the health benefits of having a pet, uh, these are probably also some of the social benefits of having a pet. So animals connect people, they create, create opportunities to socialise, to stop and talk. When you're out walking a dog, you'll meet many, many people <laughs> and have many conversations. It's a wonderful way to meet new people and it's engaging for your dog because they meet their friends as well. Um, a sense of purpose, or perhaps responsibility. Caring for a pet produces a structured routine to life as you provide for the needs of your animal, food, exercise, play, grooming, comfort. You make allowances in your timetable to share and accommodate those needs. And uh, also pets can have a positive impact on mental health too. Companion animals are great caregivers and are as we extend our feelings of empathy, it helps our relationship skills. Caring is reciprocal, it develops trust and a connection with an animal. People with animals in their lives are often better able to deal with grief, loss and depression due to the intertwined nature of their lives and sharing needs when they live with an animal. So if we now look at benefits of pet ownership for children, but here they can keep, teach kids responsibility. We spoke about purpose and responsibility earlier with adults, and we know that organisations, organisational skills and routine are very important for both pets and people. But for children, pet ownership also develops nurturing skills, allowing children to develop empathy, which encircles, which enriches sorry, their development. They can provide companionship to children with learning difficulties, and we will look a little bit later at pets as therapy, and this leads nicely on to pets as therapy. So 
So in the picture to the right, you can see a small child reading aloud to, I think it's a French bulldog. And there are many different schemes, but one scheme that you might like is to look at, uh, look at their website, is Read to Dogs. The project aims to improve literacy in children by developing confidence. So the dog doesn't chat to them at the the child. It, it, you know, it's a very natural, fluid experience. And many pets of pets as therapy volunteers work in primary education in these situations. Stroke and effect has been sh also been shown to decrease agitated behaviour in those with dementia. The Alzheimer's Society charity encourages people with dementia to keep their pets for as long as they safely can because caring for one provides a reassuring routine and also alleviates isolation. Okay, so we're looking at pet ownership and choosing the right pet. I really just wanted to, to touch on, you know, if you are considering getting a pet, then please research your ideas first. Consider your circumstances, your lifestyle, your home environment, your work pattern, your finances, and particularly the needs of the animal, animal you're interested in. During lockdown, many people acquired pets for the first time, and for many it's been a rewarding experience and increased their well-being. But already animal welfare charities have seen the consequences of poor decision-making and wrong choices, and ending in relinquishment of pets and abandonment. So research, 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 just um, check before consider um, taking on a, on a pet. There's some links I've listed here. Uh, Blue Cross has an excellent guide, but all the animal welfare charities in RSPCA, PDSA have excellent guides about finding the right pet. Uh, the Dogs Trust has uh, lots of breed information as well if you want to look at different breeds. And International Cat Care has information as well about different breeds of cats and their needs as well. The Emode pet school that's mentioned below was um, developed by Clifford Warwick. It's a scientific system that was designed to show the, ease, the degree or ease and difficulty in keeping pets. So Emode is easy, moderate, difficult, extreme. And it's particularly useful if you're considering children's pets or exotic pets. So it, it lays out you know, how um, best meet the needs of pets in your circumstances. And um, if you can't, uh, you know, if you not, don't own a pet, that doesn't mean to say you can't experience a connection with an animal. There are many opportunities of animal welfare charities to give the shift or time each week to help either at the centres. A lot of those end opportunities are reduced at the moment because of restrictions. But I would get in touch with the charities and ask for ways you may be able to help. I've mentioned the Cinnamon Trust here. Cinnamon, Cinnamon Trust actually recruited 1,800 volunteers during the COVID uh, pandemic. It's a specialist charity which focuses on elderly and terminally ill people, and they seek to keep pets and owners together in difficult times to ensure that companionship remains. It's a charity that's very popular with healthcare professionals who are unable to own a pet due to their shift patterns or unpredictable work schedule, or they may be living in rented accommodation and landlord restrictions prevent them owning a pet. So it gives them an opportunity to experience pet ownership, but also to help people um, that are vulnerable at this time. It operates a buddy system, so the volunteers help with daily tasks, weekly tasks, such as dog walking, uh, collecting food or medication for the animal, or perhaps grooming the animal, and anything that uh, may be of assistance. They also help with short-term posturing, so if the animal is hospitalised, um, then uh, they can arrange for volunteers to take the pets until they're back home. In the community. We all know, I'm a registered veterinary nurse, so I know from the veterinary side that a lot of pet owners avoid um, hospital stays because of pet dependency, because 
I mean, don't want, they don't have someone to leave their pet with. So it, it's, it's a, a wonderful um, program that, that connects people, pets, and um, volunteers in, in, a, in a unique way. There are other foster opportunities if you are thinking of short-term fostering. The Dogs Trust and the Cats Protection in our schemes um, to help uh, assist victims of domestic violence. So they offer short-term fostering with a volunteer or a person or family are seeking help and finding a suitable accommodation until they can be reunited with their pets. And, and that's um, another popular scheme that, that might be of interest. Okay, so I've put some links here about mental health um, and pets as therapy. Uh, I've also just mentioned there is an article that came out this, this week actually. Probably can't see it, so I'll, I'll read it out. It's um, open access on PLOS One. It's entitled Human Animal Relationships and Interactions During the COVID 19 Lockdown Phase in the UK Investigation, Investigating Links with Mental Health and Loneliness. And it's a lovely overview of. of um, the subject material and also some interesting links there as well. So just to finish up, I'm just going to mention citizen science projects. Um, this is a way of connecting with animals in a non-contact way. So animals are helping the environment. Citizen science projects provide information on wildlife and local communities to help manage change and make priorities for environmental needs. And there are two schemes that may be of interest, and it would be really wonderful in 2021 if the daughters got involved with volunteers. So there's the RSPB runs a garden watch, a uh, garden bird watch program in January to February, and you just spend an hour in a designated weekend, just either in a garden or in a park or in a hospital, just recording the birds you see in that time frame. And that information is fed back into national statistics to see what's happening really with our local populations and wildlife. And there's another project in July, August, better weather, uh, butterfly conservation around the butterfly count. And both schemes will, if you sign up or we sign up, will give us identification guides um, just to help you. Um, and it's fun to be out in the environment <laughs> and counting things <laughs> that you might not have normally noticed, so that's something to think about. Okay, so thank you for listening to that section. We're now going to look at pets as therapy at St George's. Uh, so just to mention the pets as therapy charity, it's a national charity founded in 1983, and its aim is to enhance health and well-being in community through the visits of trusted volunteers with their behavioural assessed animals. And um, I'll bring them up daily. Yeah, so um, we're going to talk about pets as therapy now. I'll introduce you to Dave. Uh, Rosie's not with us, but um, many of you will know about Rosie and probably have seen her around hospital on the wards. Uh, but so Dave, what, what got you interested in pets uh, Yeah, so mm -hmm. uh, Rosie and I uh, had a friend who uh, visits another hospital, or works in another hospital, and he told us about the dog therapy there, and I kind of thought, that's something I'd like to do, I work at a hospital, I've got a, a spaniel dog, that makes sense. Um, so we got involved with our local um, pest therapy coordinator who assessed Rosie and assessed me um, and signed us up and then we registered as volunteers at the Trust and for the last uh, 18 months up until Covid we've been coming in and out of the hospital, going on paediatric wards, A&E, ICU, staff cake, coffee mornings, yeah. all over the place. Um, I think people look forward to your business, don't they? Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, it, it's, it's, it's nice. When, when they see us coming down the corridor, most people are, yeah, the dog's here, um, and that guy as well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, occasionally you get a few funny looks from patients, but I think yeah. when they understand you, they, you on behalf of the charity and working with the hospital, um, I think they uh, look forward to it as well. It uh, makes a nice change for them on the wards. I, I find... Uh, Pets as therapy often you'll go with an animal and the joy of the animal interacting with the person. But then I find that 
as the music progress, sometimes the person engages with the job anyway and yeah. starts to share yeah. their experiences. And yeah, I think yeah. Uh, as volunteers, uh, I think you're the double act. So the, mm -hmm. the animal is there to the direct comfort and the, the kind of point of interest. But yeah, the conversations that you have with people about the pets they've owned, uh, yeah, and remind them of happier times, mm -hmm. taking dogs in the walk, having cats to play with at home. You do have quite a special connection with yeah. people. Um, and it's nice to distract them. People, yes, people obviously aren't yeah. in hospital for nice reasons. So it just we can just be that five minute kind of Snapshot at a different time. Yeah. Well, there are any standout events or experiences? Um, or so there's one funny moment, uh, funny, in um, AE, there was a young boy who broke his arm playing rugby okay. and he had to have his arm reset. And the, the orthopedic, I think it's orthopedic, were working on him and to put his arm in place, and he was on the gas and air. Uh, but on the other hand, we had the dog sat yeah, by his yeah. side, so he was getting maximum distraction well, from this horrible yeah, yeah. thing that was going on there. Yeah. And I don't know how the poor lad did really well yeah. to come, but uh, mostly like contributed to that. Yes, well, yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, the mum said afterwards that was fantastic because oh, he's yes. broken a few things in the past, and this yeah. was the best one. So. Yeah. And that's interesting. Sometimes the conversations are, are with the patient and the adult, but also the visitors as well. Yeah. I think they really. Yeah, is, is, is that uh, when you can kind of see people visiting elderly relatives on the ward, sometimes they're coming every week and it's kind of having a similar conversation and maybe the person isn't getting better. So just inserting the dog into that setting yeah. can kind of give a bit of a focus and let, uh, let everybody kind of breathe. And, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and Rosie likes it, she'll get a treat, do a trick. <laughs> Brilliant. When can we come back? <laughs> Trips are getting more and more on them. Uh, yeah, she's getting more and more elaborate, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 Although she's been, been rusty. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so we'll have to get trained again. So. Yes, yeah. So, um, I mean, obviously, still on home court at the moment, but uh, yeah. plans for the future. Yeah, so uh, there's been some good news recently. The Pets as Therapy charity are doing a lot of work to get uh, the volunteers and the pets back into institutions. Um, we're hopeful that um, St George's um, will go through the necessary kind of risk and protocols for us and for the, for the patients and staff. Um, yeah, maybe in the not too distant future we'll see the four lights down the corridors again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and how many dogs do we have at the So when, the, when we were at peak, we had it was myself and Peter and another staff member, and then four other members of the public who volunteer and bring their dogs. Um, and I'm also aware of a few people who have got dogs through lockdown who work here who also expressed an interest in doing it. So I'm kind of semi hopeful we can get those numbers up when, when the charity lets us start coming in. And the Pets Therapy uh, website is great, it shows. Yeah, so they've got loads of kind of materials and kind of evidence based yeah. for the work they do. Um, and they can connect uh, volunteers not just with hospitals but schools or care yes. homes and different settings. Um, I know Peter, the, the other staff volunteer, he does um, do some work in, or did do some work in cat hand as well. So, yeah, it's, just, it's nice, it meets the needs of the volunteer and the institution. It's brilliant. Oh, thank you, Dave. That's brilliant. Right, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>